Hi group. This is the Maladaptive Daydreaming Support Group. Um, I just wanted to make a short video today. Um, we're getting close to many holidays and that's going to be a lot of family get-togethers usually. Um, and I found this article on dealing with family gatherings for this is specifically for introverts a lot of MDers are introverts and even if not social situations seem kind of difficult and one of the first things that most people say when you say how do you help MD or what can you do to help control MD being more social is usually on the top of the list um, getting active and being around other people pulls you into reality more. So, I certainly don't suggest you skip family gatherings. Even though they're difficult, they're, they're good. They're going to help you. Um, but let's see what the, some of their um, suggestions to, because it's not easy because just judging by my own experience i'm not a social person so i'm awkward uh, especially when it comes to like small talk and this kind of thing it's it's hard um let's see what they say if you feel a pang of dread every time the holidays come around bracing yourself for another round of forced <laughs> merriment you're not alone yes okay um and again i say don't turn down the opportunity to get out and socialize it helps it really does it'll help you <clears throat> yep okay this person this article oh it's introvertdeer.com is where this article was and it's last year's article but um it's hard to find current articles this is i guess not thanksgiving yet <laughs> But, um, okay, they're mentioning that they're not only an introvert, but also socially anxious, which social anxiety, I think, is a big thing for a lot of people with MD. Um, I'm not sure if that's just part of being an introvert, but social anxiety, I know it's, always, it's been a big thing for me since, since I started suffering with MD. I don't know. That I've always been an introvert, but I don't think I had the social anxiety to that extent until it really started hitting home with me. And, of course, anybody who's followed my channel or in my group probably knows that um, I'm a different case as far as I didn't have it from childhood. I developed MD at the age of around 46 during a time of great hormonal changes. And so, I have always seen it as a mental disorder, not as an addiction or habit. But that's just me. There are a lot of different ways that people um, are experiencing it. But let's see if they can give us some ideas on what we can do to make it a little better. And my cat is making noise. Be on time or early. To allow yourself to settle in. I don't know about that one. One. I'm always early. Usually too early. There's a fine line between getting there in time to settle in. And getting there so early that you're stuck standing with nothing to do. No one to talk to. And feeling really out of place while the host or whatever are rushing to get those last minute things done. You don't want to be too early. But then you feel awkward. At least that I do. Okay. Give yourself a time limit. But leave early if you feel yourself turning into a grouch. Mm. <laughs> a lot of us wouldn't go if we had. I just. Mm, give yourself a time limit. I wonder when they say time limit. Do they mean how early you can leave. Or how late you have to stay kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, and I do understand the grouch thing. I mean, even before MD, 
became a problem for me just my normal introvertness introverts gain energy from calmness extroverts gain energy from being around other people my husband is an extrovert and there were times when we would be places that he was just having a blast because he was talking to so many people and just didn't want to leave and the longer we stayed the tireder and more exhausted I become and grumpy um, so I can definitely see that for an introvert I guess knowing your limit and hang around the people you're most comfortable with so you're less tired at the end of the event and again the tiredness from um, being around people drains introverts at least that's what I have found hang around people you're most comfortable with yeah this is a, good, a really good idea if it's somebody you feel comfortable talking to it makes the little chit chat while everybody's standing around waiting for the meal or event to start or whatever that definitely would make it helpful but if you don't have anybody then that's a very awkward time and that's the kind of situation if you don't really if this is more like a family reunion where these are people you don't know that well or a work get together kind of thing my suggestion would be to get there right at the time it was going to start so you wouldn't have that awkward stand around chit chat time uh, if you didn't have somebody you knew was going to be there to chit chat with so let's see what else I got don't carpool or room with others big yes yes don't carpool cause you are stuck till they want to leave <laughs> unless you're going with somebody who is just as introverted as you are then you can make a plan and that might be a good thing <coughs> excuse me if like the other thing they said about having a debt give yourself a deadline if you are going with other people that might be a good thing to set up right at the start you know i got to leave by this time but i still wouldn't do it unless i was driving that way they would have to leave when you were ready to leave or they wouldn't have a ride home <laughs> but definitely easier to just drive by yourself that way you're totally in control okay run away as fast as you can just kidding uh yeah they're saying you know if you get to feeling real anxious and, and you know uncomfortable go to the bathroom or take a walk taking a walk is usually not an option um but yeah the quick bathroom break to get away from everybody just that does help it does help help out in the kitchen mm. small break between socials and make it more bearable distract your mind instead of focusing um but you don't want to worst case scenario i think would be you know in a crowded room and you're so anxious that you've done zoned out and you're in another place mentally and then you all of a sudden come to reality with people staring at you, waiting for you to answer a question that somebody asks you. You don't want to do that. Try to stay engaged. Try to stay in the present. Be mindful. And if it's getting really hard, practice some of those mindful techniques. We've gone over some in the in past videos and talked about it a lot. Um, whether it's breathing. <coughs> you know feel noticing your breath in and out um uh some easy tricks uh that also kind of make you look like you're interested in what's going on you play a mental game of uh i think we used to call it i spy to where like pick a color green and you try to find everything green you can find in the room so you're looking around acting interested <laughs> but you're giving your mind something to do so you don't slip into that md zone out so just 
a f one little thing you can try. And don't feel like you have to attend every event. True. True. It's okay to decline. It's okay to say, I'm just not feeling up to it. Or, you know, don't try to overdo. Your mental health is very important. And you have to take care of it. But, you know, being social around people is really good therapy. It really will help you. As long as these people aren't toxic. And if it's going to include people who are very negative or cause you a lot of anxiety, say no. Say, look, I'm sorry, I can't attend. And stick to it. But if, if it's something you can do, do it. Because it is going to help you. Um... It's going to help you come up, you know, better use strategies for staying in the present. And hopefully these are things you could probably do by yourself also to help keep you present. But that's that article. And we're going to be talking about this same topic in our next uh, support group video chat. So, all right. Well, that's all I have for today. I will talk to you guys later.